Okay, everybody. Um, I'm going to be talking about using Drupal as a front end, as as opposed to most other people here today talking about using Drupal headless. Um, and mostly, I'm going to be talking about Islandora and how uh, libraries can use Islandora to create a digital repository of of their assets and what we've done with Detroit Public Library. So. This is what I want to do. I'll talk to talk to you about what Islandora is because actually I should have pulled the crowd. How many of you here know what Islandora is? Um, how many of you um, are mostly just like Drupal people that are curious about what it might be? Okay, that sounds perfect. That's the I've prepared for this crowd, so this is good. Um, and then I'm going to show you what we've done with Detroit Public Library. Um, and built the digital repository for them, and then some of the customizations needed because Islandora out of the box doesn't quite meet the requirements. And then open it up for questions and kind of discussion. I'm going to keep like the last half relatively informal so we can have kind of a back and forth. Um, so this is about me. I'm a librarian by training. I've been working with Drupal um, since about 2008. Um, and now I work for the Cherry Hill Company where we focus on libraries and nonprofits and doing things like um, this island or site that I'm going to show a little bit of. Um, okay, so what is Islandora? Islandora is a kind of an ecosystem, I would say. Technically, it's a, it's a bunch of Drupal modules um, that allow you to hook into other systems relatively easily. Um, and those systems are, actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to change my screen. To have my presenter notes real quick. So hold your thoughts. I should have set this up earlier. I should pause my recording too, huh? So we can. Okay, and we're we're back. Um, okay, so the the reason Island Door exists is because in libraries and in archives, um, Librarians and archivists have, have a need for stewardship of their digital objects more so than just like um, files you'll put up on your website like an image or two or something like that. They need truly to have a record of their metadata and their digital objects for um, for a long period for long longer periods of time than you think of a normal website. And so Islandora was conceived of to handle that kind of use case as as well as the need for collaboration among people contributing to the digital objects and also providing access to those digital objects because that's the mission of libraries and archives. Um, they also needed a flexible system that did not require as much um, back-end support as a lot of that kind of technology takes. So what Islandora is, is made up of Drupal, Fedora Commons, which is a repository system, and Apache Solar. Um, these three systems together, um, they, they work in harmony so that the digital objects can be stored and tracked in, in a robust way. They can be accessed through um, Solar, because that's how you can reach into the repository and find things through your queries. And then Drupal handles the um, Actually, let me start over here. Um, so what Drupal does for Islandora is that it handles the, the forms for data ingest. So you can use your, your Drupal admin section that it's really good at for, for managing your metadata and creating your digital objects on a day-to-day -day basis. And also, you can extend the capabilities of Islandora through the module system that Drupal, Drupal provides. And so the other piece is Fedora, which is um, the digital repository, which has a it has a, a a digital object model that has been well tested and has been um, it's it's ro more robust than a normal like everyday word file that you're creating. So I'll go into a little bit of that later. And then also it uses Solar for the the indexing and the search to to be, to gain access to your digital files. And so you might be thinking, some of you that aren't 
necessarily familiar with Islandora. What, why wouldn't we just use Drupal to do this? Because you can upload files to Drupal and you can make fields about those files, so why wouldn't you do it? Um, and the, the real reason is because of the, the digital object architecture that Fedora brings to the picture. It has this concept of, of data streams and content models and internal relationships between metadata and objects that um, allows you to really robustly describe and then also um, make derivatives of metadata so that it can be harvested and accessed by different systems altogether. And this is all like built into the way Fedora works. So let me show you a couple images that might explain it a little bit better. Um, so every Fedora digital object has a persistent ID, which is just like a unique ID for everything in the system. Um, it's got and it stores object properties. Um, for that, you would, the object properties are just kind of like system metadata about it. It's not stuff contributed by a person necessarily. But then you have data streams, which are kind of broken up here. Let me show you the bigger one. Um, broken up into different kinds of data streams. So there are system ones like the relationships in a, in a basic Dublin core metadata stream and an audit metadata stream or an audit um, trail data stream so that the system can know what has been happening with the object as it's being stored. But then you also have any other data streams that you as the content administrator want to add. And so you can add multiple different kinds of items into an object. So you can have your um, mods XML data stream that really describes your the metadata about your object. You can have your original TIFF image that you use when you scanned your your original digital object maybe or your scan of your newspaper from the 1800s or something like that. That, that can be your original object or original item within your object and you can have derivatives of that TIFF for display. You can have different metadata streams up that describe the object differently. You can also have metadata streams that show relationships between other objects that are in the collection. So this kind of architecture has been developed and it would be, you could do it in Drupal, but it would be a homegrown thing. And this is, the Fedora repository is really, it's used by a lot of um, institutions, even on its own without Islandora. And so it's been well tested and, and really well developed for this use case. So it makes sense to use behind, behind the scenes. And it can handle, I believe, a lot more objects than like just a, a Drupal database dealing with files. So with that, let me show you a little bit about what we, what we did with um, Detroit Public Library. Unless, let, first I can actually take some questions if anybody has any questions about that part. Yeah. Cost. This is all open source software. So the cost of the software, well, the price of the software is free. The cost is whatever you want to put in into it. And what about the storage of the assets, though? That's free, too. No. The, so the, the, the software is is right. no price, but you put it on a server that you're going to you deal with. I mean, you can put it up in the cloud. You can put it elsewhere you can yeah but that's going to cost you sure right okay anyone else okay let's get into let me open a browser up here real quick all right so you know what i'm oh this would be bad i don't know what screen my 